Volpo Robotics has updated the Hexapod servos from MG90s to genuine Tower Pros. Whoa, 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 hold up. If you've come over from the main build video, then you only wanna see what you need to do to get these new ones working with the rubber washers. So I'll cover that and then afterwards, I'll show you how to upgrade if you've already built the kit. So just like before, we're gonna turn it on and then we're gonna twist it around slowly till we get to adjust. Just like in the original video, we're gonna then put on the horns facing directly away from the little bump. Now that last step was only for the knee servos. For the hips, this is where we deviate. In your kit should be some little black rubber washers. Before you put on the servo horns on the hips, one of those needs to go in between. These rubber washers are needed because the new servos are digital and much, much more powerful. They move into position so fast that the servo can overshoot and introduce some wobble as it goes back and forth trying to reach the exact point. For the knee joints, we have gravity and the weight of the hexapod pushing down to dampen out that force. But for the hips, we need the little rubber washers just to add a tiny bit of friction to prevent this behavior. Now that the rubber washer is in place, we can put on the rest of our single-sided servo horns once again facing away from the bump. There's the upgraded component done, so if you're building this for the first time, you have permission to click back to the original build video and continue. If you're doing an upgrade, keep watching, because I've got my second red hexapod that I need to pull everything apart before I can put it back together with the new servos. Now I've just finished upgrading the white one with the genuine Tower Pro servos, and before I do the red, might be a good idea to explain why the upgrade was made and look at the performance differences. So let's turn them both on. Okay, I'm gonna try and do this simultaneously. So I'm gonna twist the dial up to demo and hopefully we can compare the performance of the two. Okay, you can see the one in white, which has the upgrade. Is much, much faster than the one in red. Just so they don't destroy everything on my desk. Oh. Well, I hope you could see the performance difference was very clear there. So the white one got through the routine about one or two seconds quicker than the red one. And all of the movements were razor sharp. They were really fast, they were really deliberate, they were really precise. So as our first main improvement is in the actual performance of the robot. Now what you'll find with some of the other servos, if they were defective, is that the legs would start to twitch or sag and get stuck in a certain position as they got too hot. So this Tower Pro Genuine Servo upgrade aims to alleviate both of those problems and therefore, in my opinion, it's really worthwhile doing. Got to take your hats off to the developer, Vorpal Robotics, for trying to constantly improve their product and make sure their customers getting the best experience possible. So without further ado, let's start pulling this one apart so we can upgrade from the old to the new. So the first step before we even begin to disassemble our existing robot is to take all of them out of the bag. If you haven't purchased your components directly from Volpo Robotics, they've got a great article on their wiki that details the performance and the visual differences between a fake and a genuine Tower Pro servo. We've got our servos out of the bag and ready to go. The first step, just like the first time we built the robot, is to get our white texture and number all of the plugs from zero to 11. Don't forget to underline six and nine so you don't get them mixed up. We're finally up to the stage where we can begin to disassemble our existing robot. So the first thing we're gonna do is to turn it upside down and then use our Allen key to take out all of the bolts for the servos on the hips and the knees. The bolts are out so we can start to disassemble the legs. This bit is pretty straightforward. 
like we did when we put it together, we angle it away from the servo horn and then it slips out. We need to repeat that for all of the joints. And finally, we then need to pull the servos out. Now this is where it gets a little bit trickier. What you need to do is to flex the plastic and then push behind the servo and it should start to pop out. Now the only tool I've found I've needed here is a flathead screwdriver. It can really help with popping it out. So if I use two fingers here to flex it open and then put the screwdriver behind, gently pry, the knee servos will pop out. We'll put the lower leg aside for now. Now the hip servos can be a little bit more of a pain. So once again, we're gonna pop over the top of the servo to remove them. And this is where I felt like I needed to be a little bit of a contortionist because I needed one extra set of hands. But once again, we need to flex it open. And hopefully with a little bit of luck, you can get them to pop out as well. I reckon that's the worst part of this upgrade. So if you finished it, congratulations. If you've got a better way to pop out those hip servos, please leave it in the comments. The next thing we're gonna do is pull off all of the servo horns and put them with their servo bolts. They're gonna be completely recycled. So you don't need to upgrade to the ones from the new kit. They're practically the same thing. Now that we've finished that, we're gonna turn it over and we're gonna open the lid and it's time to unplug all of the old servos. Gonna lift up our electronics caddy. I've already removed the two screws that hold this in. Now in our main board where all the servos come out, it's simply a matter of unplugging the first 12 plugs. They're gonna be yellow, red, and brown. Excellent, let's pull them through from the outside of the robot to get them out of the way. All of the old servos are out. So I now have a pile of legs, knee joints, and all of the nuts and bolts from the servo. You might have guessed that the next job is to start doing everything we've just done, but in reverse. So we're gonna take our numbered servos and we're gonna to start to thread them back in, matching up the numbers on the legs and also on the hips. Servos zero to five are the ones that go on the hips. So I'm gonna rotate the chassis of the robot until I show zero. And then just like we did the first time, we're gonna do it from the bottom. The wire needs to face to the outside and the little bump faces to the inside. We're gonna push it in until it has that satisfying click. And then we're gonna thread it into the hole immediately next to the cable. Pull it through out of the way. The hip servos are back in, so it's now time to take the rest of the servos, which should be six through 11, and then find the matching foot and match up the number and thread it through like we did the first time. Let's do a little refresher on that. So I've matched up six with the one that I've ridden on for servo number six. Gonna rotate the servo around, so like with the hip, the cord is facing out, and that means the little bump is facing in. Simply gonna slide it in until we get that satisfying click and repeat for all of the rest. We're now gonna thread the servos from the lower legs back through the knee joints. To do this, we can take any of the knee joints and we're gonna orientate them so that our two cutouts are in the following positions. The horizontal one is on the left and the vertical one is on the top. We're gonna to take our servo wire, we're gonna thread it through and repeat for another five times. Now comes a very simple step of matching up the top number on our leg with the matching hip joint on our robot. So this one you can see is number two. So I'm gonna find the matching number two. I'm gonna thread this through. And depending on how you're going, you might need to reach to the inside and kind of pull the wiring through just so it doesn't get tangled. We're not gonna clip anything else in. We're just gonna leave it dangling like that and we're gonna repeat once more. Everything is threaded through and now is definitely the time to check to see if you've knocked anything loose. Fortunately for me, all I could see that went wrong was I dislodged the speaker. The wiring didn't come undone, but it came loose from the body, so I pushed it back through and now I'm ready to plug in all of my servo wires again. We simply locate the pins on the board and we go through them one at a time. So zero, matching up the yellow, red, brown. 
and we do them in order. So zero first, and then number one, two, three, four, all the way through to 11. We're all plugged in, so let's move the battery compartment out of the way and turn it round to stop. And then turn on the robot. We're gonna turn the dial to adjust and that should put all of the servos in their 90 degree position and allow us to put on the horns. Now don't forget, of course, because we've got the upgraded one, we need to put the washers onto the hip servos, but not the knee servos like you saw at the start of the video. Once each one is done, we can begin to clip them into the legs and hips. I've switched it off for now, but I do have all of the servo horns in place and all of the joints clipped together. I haven't put in the little bolts for the servos yet because first I want to turn it on, put it in the stop position and make sure that everything is working correctly. I'm going to turn that on now. Okay, I think I'll stop it there before it destroys everything. And I'm ready to put in the nuts and bolts and screw everything back together. Well, our Vorpool Hexapod is back together and upgraded for better performance. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos on how to upgrade and modify this great robot to get the most out of it. See you next time. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.